Hay-scented ferns are light green and up to two feet long and are often found in throngs of individual fronds rather than in vases or clumps. They may even be a complete ground cover in open areas of the woods, forming a low canopy over the forest floor. But the native fern isn't too choosy and will colonize slopes, meadows, and even old fields, wherever it can get a foothold. They're often called weeds in the invasive sense. They're very good at taking any opportunity to colonize a space. Fast-growing perennial rhizomes help their clonal spread, and deer avoidance releases them from competition with other plants. They're better at using low light and sun flex than most plants, and their rhizome connections may help those in the deeper shade. Even so, this only member of the genus Cytobolium is a pretty fern and one of the laciest around. Let's pick a frond and take a closer look. First, the cuts from an imaginary solid blade. One cut to form the pairs of pinny. Then on a pinna, make a second cut to form a pinnule. Then do some partial cuts or pinking on each pinnule, and you have a twice cut two pinnate pinnatophid frond. Looking at the underside, note the hairiness of the rachis and subaxes, and the regularly spaced spore groups, or sori. Each sorus has a cup-shaped indusium. The fern's tendency to turn towards light, along with its linear rhizome vegetative spread, can give an impression of standing ranks and rows of growth. Where the hay-scented ferns rule, even the trails get overgrown. The cut hay smell from a patch on a warm day or from a crushed frond is a sweet thing. But one can see why other plants and even future tree regeneration may be limited or excluded by this spreading blanket of ferns. <laughs>